Good evening everyone. The 41st annual canal run brought more than 800 participants to the Copper Country area ranging from Cuskella Road east of McLean State Park to downtown Hancock for the finish and there were no complaints about the conditions. The half marathon started at the intersection of M203 and Cuskella Road at 730 this morning. Wheelchair racer Dean Juntinen gets to start a few seconds before everyone else and he beat everyone else to the finish line and that included TV6's Mike Ludlam. Defending champion Stephen Ellis of Houghton didn't waste any time taking the lead. Meanwhile, at 8 o'clock, runners and walkers in the 10-mile event took their first steps at McLean State Park before turning right onto M203, merging with a number of the half-marathoners. The route stays on M203 with the 5-mile runners and walkers joining the chase a little before 9 o'clock. We jumped quickly to the finish because Stephen Ellis was blazing through the course. He won in a time of 1 hour, 14 minutes, 35.5 seconds, more than 9 minutes ahead of the runner-up Mike Maloney of Clarkson, Michigan. Ellis is 2 for 2 in the half marathon. He's training for the Long Course Triathlon World Championships in Oklahoma City in September. When I was running along the canal, you could see the water was just flat, you know, just like glass, so not much of a wind up there, which was fantastic. Last year, there was a bit of a headwind, and it made it a little harder the last couple miles, especially when the last mile is pretty much uphill and you got a headwind, but this year was perfect. You know, you got the half marathon, the 10 miler, and the five miler, and then you got the walking. This is really impressive, and I think it's beautiful up here because, you know, this is a country where it's great for running. Beautiful weather, great support staff on the course, a lot of volunteers out there who are doing a great job. Actually, there was a couple girls that took off hard, and I had a goal to catch the lead girl, and it got her around mile five or six. And so, yeah, I just wanted to keep up with the lead pack, and then there were some guys that had a really good pace. Kate McLeod's time of just over an hour and a half was the sixth fastest overall. McLeod finished more than three and a half minutes ahead of Lorium's Gwendolyn Graybig. Tempe, Arizona's Ryan Norman was the men's 10-mile winner in just under 54 minutes. Houghton's Jennifer Dannenbring captured the women's 10-mile in a little over one hour and 10 minutes. And there's Sabrina. Good job, Sabrina. The fourth annual Red Earth Classic got underway around 9.15 a.m. this morning from downtown Nagani. The Beast is a 32-mile race that circles from Nagani to Ishming and then back to Nagani. And what do you do when you're waiting for the bikers at a checkpoint? Well, volunteers from the Westwood football team, they played some catch over there. And they did pretty well. I'm not going to, that's, this is going to be a nice spiral. Look at this. Check it out. Good throw. But it was all business when racers made their way across Division Street and then back to the climb. And yes, it was a climb as the back trails had several hills that the racers had to conquer. And after trekking the 32 miles, racers can cross the finish line knowing that they conquered the beast. The Red Earth Classic, it's, uh, same as it's been the last couple years I've done it, really technical, uh, lots of short, punchy climbs and short technical descents, steep rock drops, a little bit of mud, so everything I expected. Brian Motter finished first overall with a time of 2 hours, 7 minutes and 33.8 seconds. That was 21 seconds faster than Tristan Schutten that finished in second place. Sarah Kylander Johnson was the first female finisher of the Beast at 2 hours, 39 minutes and 21.6 seconds. This is Motter's third Red Earth Classic victory. Well, the Delta County Junior Girls were 3-0 entering today's game, outscoring opponents 30-1. First inning action, Delta County's Jenna Tardis smacks this to center. That would be a double to start off the game. Next batter is Sydney Hero, who smokes this one over the right fielder's head for a triple. That would also score Tardiff there, and it was 1-0 in favor of Delta County. Boyne City would only have one base runner the whole game, and she's going to make a crucial error. She is going to try and steal home, but Dakota Cloutier says not today. She gets her at the home plate. And uh, by, the, by the way, Gabby Solo has been absolutely shut out during this tournament. She's only allowed two hits in three appearances, and she's not giving up one here. She had 10 strikeouts in the contest. Then she turns around to help out her own cause. Later on the game, she smacks the ball, and that would score McKenna Bolin and Sydney Hero to make it 8-0. Delta County is now 4-0, and they beat Boyne City 13-0 in five innings. They have outscored their opponents 43-1 in the tournament. They return to action in the state semifinal tomorrow at 1 p.m. Jumping onto the major softball action from the state tournament from Kalamazoo. Escanaba taking on Tecumseh. 
Paxton Bowling will lay a bunt down that will get her on base, and that was followed up by Emily Moore at bat, who recorded a triple. That would make it 5-1 to one at that point. Escanaba goes on to beat Tecumseh by a final score of 11-1. to one.